Hey everybody, I was out of my boat yesterday and I was messing around with some electrical stuff trying to rig it up so that I could recharge my phone and whatnot while I was out there and I came up with a really interesting idea. I've talked before about how to get your aquariums through a power outage and now that we're moving into hurricane season here on the east coast, it's probably time to start thinking about that again. I've talked in the past before about using the little battery powered bubble uh, pumps, little baby bubbles is what they're usually referred to as, or the brand name is Baby Bubbles, and you can get a variety of different sizes of those, but they're limited in their function and they're limited in their effectiveness, and they'll get you by in a pinch if you've got one or two tanks or some small tanks or something. And then you've got the other end of the spectrum, which is what I've done, and that is I bought a portable generator that I have wired into my home electric system, and so if my power act goes out, all I have to do is start my generator up, flip a switch, and then I'm running off of generator power and while it doesn't power my house fully it lets me run the whole house on crippled running and I can get by with my heat and I can get by with my food staying fresh and I've got lights around the house my uh, water pump still works I have a well so I'm dependent on electricity for my water and so on and so forth so that's probably the other extreme from the little battery powered bubble packs to the install a generator in your home so what do you do in the middle what do you do if you've got enough fish tanks and stuff that you need more than some battery packs, but you're in an apartment or something and you can't really afford to run a generator or you simply can't afford to buy a generator? And I came up with the idea of using a simple DC to AC power inverter like I've used on my boat before. Now, this is a very simple unit. It's a very small unit, and it plugs into a standard we used to call these cigarette lighter plugs, but I don't know what, the power adapter plug, whatever they call them these days. Um, but you can cut this off and you can put a couple of alligator clips onto it and just clip this directly to a 12 volt deep cycle marine battery. And then you've got a plug and you've also got some USB ports. Now, this is a really cheap unit, and I fried it while I was out yesterday. I don't know what I did, but I crossed some wires, and things started smoking, and I had to disconnect the battery as quick as I could, and this does not work anymore. So I don't know what I did to it, but I fried this unit. Fortunately, I actually have a much larger power inverter that I used to use in my truck, and it is an 1,100-watt unit. I got it out, I hooked it up to a battery, and lo and behold, once I plugged in some filters to it, it ran like a champ. So I think this is a pretty good viable alternative to the extreme of buying a generator versus the other extreme of simply buying some bubble powered uh, battery packs. This will be a simple way to keep your tanks up and running fully functional. So let's go out back where I've got it all set up and I'll show you exactly what I did and how I did it. And let me also point out that this 1100 watt um, power inverter that I have is pretty big. That's a lot of power to invert and it would drain your battery pretty quickly if you were actually drawing that much juice. I tested my um, Tetra Whisper hang on the back for a 10 gallon tank which is what we're going to go look at and I put it on my kilowatt meter and it's only drawing 4 watts. So if you had 5 or 6 of those little filters running, a simple 150 watt power inverter would be plenty of power for you. Keep in mind, if you're running heaters in your tank, a small heater is going to run 150 watts. That's going to max something like this out if you're trying to run a space heater or a tank heater. Uh, you know, then this is not going to be uh, adequate for you. So keep that kind of stuff in mind. If you're simply running the filter and maybe an LED uh, or something like that, then a battery can probably last you many days before the juice runs down. So again, let's go outside. We'll have a look and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. All right. So this is the 10 gallon tank that I had in my living room recently and it's got a slow leak in it, but it'll hold enough water for the purposes of our demonstration here. So this is my power inverter and again this is a fairly big one you don't need to do anything this big and it's got a red cord that goes to the positive on the battery and it's got a black cable that goes to the negative on the battery and it's got a switch that turns it on and off this one also comes with a remote switch so I can turn it on and off here and then of course the front of it just has your plugs and display and all that it tells you how much voltage it's running and so on and so forth and so with mine if I just turn mine on
we get water flow. So we've also got Squeaker, and we've got Bootsy, and we've got Princess Sassafras out here keeping us company. So there you go, a simple power inverter that right now is running 13.3 volts. That tells you how much juice I've got in my battery. So my battery is fully charged right now. And with this little unit, as I said, this thing runs four watts. So if that battery was running this unit alone, it would probably run it for days before it actually wore down at four watts so i will put a link down below to uh, this power inverter i think it was about 85 dollars for this power inverter uh, you would of course also need a deep cycle marine battery or any kind of battery really but a deep cycle battery if you're not familiar with them they're designed to be slowly discharged over a long period of time and then recharged over and over again unlike a car battery a standard battery is designed to put out a lot of juice all at once and then just get topped back off real quickly. They're not meant to be drained down over long periods of time the way these deep cycle batteries are. So a simple deep cycle battery, little power inverter, and your fish tanks can stay up and running for days should you have a power outage. And with the 1100 watt inverter there, you could also make a cup of coffee or blow dry your hair or whatever, provided you've got enough juice in your battery. Because again, 1100 watts, you can run quite a bit of uh, electrical juice on that. So there you go. There's another alternative to the uh, Can't think of the word I'm looking for. Generator, there we go. That's my portable generator. And this plug gets plugged into that jack. And then I flip a switch on my box in the basement. And once this is up and running, then I've got that powering my house. And that's about 4,000 watts coming out of that. So again, that's a little on the extreme. That was about $400. Whereas you can buy yourself a power inverter and again this big swanky 1100 watt power inverter was about $80. That little cheap one I showed you in the basement that was 150 watts uh, was about $19 or $20 or something. So if you've only got a couple little tanks like this and a couple little filters like that that you need to keep running, a 150 watt filter, uh, I mean a 150 watt inverter would probably be plenty let me show you what the uh, kilowatt meter shows. Hang on half a second here. All right, we got the kilowatt meter set up. And we got it set for watts. Now we will go ahead and plug that in. When I had it plugged into the wall, it was drawing four watts. And now that it's plugged into this inverter, it's drawing less than three and a half watts. So there you go. I mean, again, if you're looking at powering a few tanks and all you've got is a couple of these little filters, you do not need 1100 watts for something that's only drawing 3.3, 3.5 watts. So one of those small 150 watt power inverters would probably work just fine so i'll put a link to both of them uh the big one and the small one and then of course they've got all sizes in between and you can go all the way up to three or four thousand watt inverters but then you would probably need a whole bank of batteries so there you go thanks for watching hope this was helpful make sure you're subscribed and i'll see you real soon in the next one